Hey everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. You won't be seeing this for a little while. It's Memorial Day. I have been granted a request. My mower needs to go. My little three-point tractor did not want to start. Trey's been push mowing an area at a time and doing a great job. We had a ton of rain and the grass grew like crazy and the push mower cannot get through stuff. We don't have a lot of mowing, especially with the way he does it. But oh my gosh, the kids play area in the backyard, walking through the barnyard. I'm getting soaking wet in the morning doing chores from the night dew that's on the grass. So let me show you what we got going on. So if you know anything about running these old tractors, there's something all the time going on that's needing repairing. And you've got to be a great mechanic or you're never gonna get any farming done. So, this one has to be belt started. So he had to do a little moving around, get one tractor started. We've been stealing the battery from it. And belt start this one. So this is the three point mower that's the heavy duty. The trouble is, is with the height of this tractor getting under low areas, these trees, hang down four and a half feet. The apple trees are impossible, so there's no way he's gonna be able to mow around there at all. So he's gonna run this Land Pride Finish Mower for the first time this year on the 720 John Deere. And I am so glad that he's doing it. So this area here, Trey actually push mowed all of it. And all of this side of the yard has not had any mowing whatsoever. And you can see our giant lake that has formed in our gravel driveway. His heavy trucks just pack it down further and further and I am never gonna be able to shovel enough. So, oh, one of these days I'm gonna find myself a power steering little Ford tractor because I need a three point and I need a loader and I need a snow blade or back blade. But look at this height going on here. People go by our house and they assume we must be on vacation or something because it's so overgrown and normally he would hook up the bush hog or even the sickle bar mower when he's doing hay to mow the dishes. And it is just way, way too overgrown. And it's too wet to do any hay still a little bit early but oh my gosh the hay's grown so much it's as tall as this it's as tall as this grass for sure the rye is way tall it's easily five feet tall in most areas and these guys Georgie is all ready to go out mowing but I always make dad do some test passes first because I don't like running equipment with the kids on it especially when it's the first time in a while since it's been used and of course our kids, they leave their stuff all over in the grass. It's so tall, it's hard to find out where all the, there could be a bike laying in the grass for all we know, right? So I did some passes. We're gonna see how this great finish mower does. It didn't get a lot of use last year because it got so dry with the drought. I remember the day I got it, I was so excited. It was raining. We didn't get to use it for days. Trey and I made videos of changing the gear oil in it and running it, getting it running. You've got to get things going. Oh, look at that. Trey was push mowing grass this tall and it was stalling out his push mower on the tallest setting. His chain is whipping on his PTO shaft cover. That's awesome. Yeah.
probably go and do some adjustments on his chain now. But I'll film him with him going along a little bit and we'll see how it goes. Look at that! That's like four passes with your push mower. That width is about four passes, the same as your push mower. Your push mower is like 15 or 18 inches. This is 70, I think it's a 72 inch. Let's go take a look. So we got a little bit of mowing done and wouldn't you know, something broke. Nothing major, we lost a belt. So I had to get online and get a bell ordered. I'll show you some more footage of us mowing down our massive lawn because it is growing up so bad. Because of the rain, we really got behind on it and there's no way the push mower is going through it. And I can only do so much weed whacking. I go out to do chores during the morning and I come back all wet up to my knees. So they've been doing a little work here. Trey decided he wanted to get some paint on his John Deere tractor weight while we're waiting. He'll have that all put back together and dry. And that belt says it's gonna be here tomorrow so we can hopefully get this apart and get it on. I mean, look at this already. We really, really need to mow. This is up to my rib. It is so huge, it's got to get knocked down. If he doesn't get that belt changed fast on that mower, if I don't get it done so that he can run it on a dry day, we're going to be out here with the sickle bar mower and the baler wrapping this up. The seed heads on this, oh my, they're just huge. So it's time to get mowing. So we're back at the lawn mowing. If you watch other people's farm videos in Michigan, you'll know that we've been getting rain just constant. You get a day of rain, two days of rain, you get a day of sun or two days of sun. When the grass is this tall, it takes two days to get dried out. So it actually didn't rain yesterday, but everything is so tall it was wet until probably two in the afternoon. And our new belt came. He was able to start mowing and the belt jumped. It was not quite right. We had to put a new tension spring on it. So we're doing some adjustments. And hopefully we'll be able to get this place mowed today. It's at the point now that we really need to... Um, raise the deck to be able to keep going or else get the brush hog out. So with anything used, there's always lots of little jinky things. And the spring that they had on here was not doing anything. So he swapped the spring out and maybe we didn't have the tension quite right on it or maybe it was that the grass was too tall. So we're doing some adjustments there to loosen it so that we can get the belt back on because it twisted when it jumped off. This is what it all looks like. and. You know, it took me probably an hour trying to find the right diagram for how the belt goes on. This is a really long belt. And finding which way your belts and where it's supposed to go through the pulleys, that's a challenge. Even on their own website, there's lots of different models. You think you'd just be able to punch in the number and belt diagram and it would pop up. But we found it. It'd be a lot easier doing it without that middle section on, huh? And if you guys know anything about this vent hole, we seem to be losing gear oil. And he says it seems to be just kind of blowing out. So I didn't know if there's a gasket behind there that's going bad or an O-ring. Let me know in the comments below if you know about that because I couldn't find anything on their website about it. And when I took it off, it looks like it's just the little vent nut or cap. A lot of stuff accumulated in there. Believe it or not, this was all cleaned out. goes top pulley over to here to the back to this one right here over to those two 
and then back over to the one here on the left. Yeah, it seems to be that it jumped this middle one and jumped off the end. The, the, yeah, the one on the right. That's what I meant by middle. So it's supposed to go from here up here. How do these go? Here. Just, just straight around? Yeah. That's what it looks like. Uh huh. Do you need me to push on this other? It all looks right. Okay. But do you need me to push on it to get it over there? Oh, that swing one, maybe a little bit. I was okay. just looking at it, make sure you're not pushing. Yeah, that wouldn't be just twisted when it pops off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll tell ya. Always wear gloves when you do this kind of stuff because I don't want to lose a finger. Watch it. Got it? Not so bad with two people. I saw that. Yeah, I figured when they were filling it, they must have spilled a lot or was leaking out of the top from not having it sealed with thread pipe dope. Because all that paint has wore off. And you know all this paint is their custom land pride, they call it land pride beige. I tried cat yellow, it was too bright. I tried a rust only in beige and it was really close. That was the closest I could get. I showed that last year. I touched up this side just to show you. Of course I'm shadowing it. But I thought it was a little too light and dull. I'd rather have it the right color and have it knee painted than screw it up. So a guy here said that I was having to push a lot too hard on this pivoting arm and that when we were getting to the tall grass when it should have been able to um, release and adjust its tension with the spring that it should have been moving better and I know when we started the pivot that the spring attaches to wasn't moving well so he's going to take this apart and see about getting it lubricated with some good grease because maybe that's what made it jump because it's not budging he thinks it might be even froze right up so he was able with two hands to give it a shove of course I was holding the camera and only got it slightly but see now it seems to just be real stiff in there I know people tend to believe that if you're buying used equipment, you're buying somebody else's mechanical problems or difficulties, but not everybody is as mechanically inclined as this other guy is here. This guy, meaning me, you see all my videos on my repairs. If it's something I'm not familiar with like this, I just leave it to him because I value my fingers. And I'm not a real fan of black grease all over my hands. Once you get it right, it'll be right all season. Yeah, see, the belt can't do that as much force as you're having to put it into it. I believe you are correct. Mm-hmm. 
I've been noticing, he's been noticing a lot of videos, WD-40 is really pushing their products through YouTube channels to advertise for them, their sponsorships and affiliates. I used to always buy WD-40 and I had heard about PB Blaster about six months or so ago. And every time I buy a can, it gets used up pretty good. So when you can find those bonus cans, that's always great. If you need it in an aerosol can. We were discussing yesterday how the old farmers and the old timers just to use uh, old motor oil in an old oil can and it worked great. And our son Trey goes around with his oil can oiling and greasing everything. We just keep some little squirt bottles around and, and do that. I told him if I saw this in a bonus case, bonus size, I was going to buy it by the case. He told me to save my pennies and use the oil out of the drum. Pretty smart way of thinking. Uh huh. Yeah, it's double sided like a wing. maintenance. I would like to take note that this fella hasn't had breakfast yet. George came out having a piece of leftover pizza from yesterday and gave Dad a half a slice of pizza. I have to feed this guy lots of protein to keep these muscles going. Yeah. What about a regular crowbar? Will that dent the deck? Yeah, that's my drip. Mm hmm I don't mean like the pry bar, a regular construction crowbar. No, longer leverage. After lots and lots of mower adjustments on the finish mower, He's getting going on it. We ended up putting the original spring back on it because I didn't know it, but oh my. After he kind of got things right, that spring replacement he put on was a quarter to a third of size in diameter and probably a third of the size in length. So we had to get adjusted. So I would say the thistles are getting away from us. The thistles are starting to grow up in the waterway. We've never had weeds in the waterway. But I wanted to come out and see. We had torrential rains, oh, two days ago. And the video will be going up next about the weather, you know, that just went through after this one. Try to always do the videos about two days, three days apart to not flood your inbox with all of the videos. But, you know, with farming, it can be a lot. I know some of those guys post videos every single day and I don't think you want to see my face that much but look here behind me that is a patch of thistles that patch of thistles is at least up to my face and shoulder high and that's the lowest part it's not totally flat here it kind of grows into a V so this is the waterway and I have oh I have blossoms let me show you this so a lot of hay customers aren't a real big fan of the first cutting because it can be stemmy, thick coarse stems left from winter. Well, these stems are as tall as the grass, 
in the yard. So we've got grass, uh, al alfalfa, and usually the clover doesn't come in till later. I'm not seeing any of that, but this will be good cow feed. But see how, how wet that is? My shoes are right down in it. This is quite wet. So it'll have today to dry out a little bit. See here I got got some alfalfa blossoms it's looking real good that's good for the bees they like it the rye right up there is doing real good and I'll tell you if I get up over this hill the thistle start taking off real bad on this side the rye is solid and the weeds never took hold all of that side of that waterway got that sugar treatment last year we ran out of time and didn't get to this side huge difference it made so I think feeding those microbes putting that back into the soil helps tremendously without putting artificial chemicals fertilizers on it it's a good way to do it and in areas of the field we've got clover growing like a cover crop to suppress the weeds only because we spread manure from our barn and all those seeds recycled through the animals Oh my gosh, this ditch is so tall, and I'm going right for it. See, there's a little drain right here, and it's going, it's got to go up over this bank. Big, big burdock. Burdocks and thistles, everything's going to get mowed down today. So, oh yeah, oh, I stepped right in it. Frog went jumping away. I'm going to go eat some lunch, guys. Are you guys filling up on junk? They found more pizza and more chips. You know what they say, now we're cooking with peanut oil. So I'm gonna mess around with the string trimmer now. That was some maple, some maple sticks. With all these maple trees, there's always plenty. I hope it was nothing else. He's stopping. Good. Why is he stopping? We've had so many adjustments to do on this. When he started last time, he lost a mower blade. Oh, I think it lost again. Oh no! What the heck? All right, we're back to the repair shop. Everyone, wish us luck. We've already done half the day on this. I'm gonna make him some lunch and give him a pat on the back for the work he is doing. That's the second time. Something's not right. Here I thought it was a maple branch. Oh, let's see what he's got to say. Again? Yeah. They're a little bit stripped, so anything that happens at all just falls off. So it's just sitting in there, and the minute you start going, it's just working itself loose. So we're in a lucky situation. Most of the time, anything we own, his dad owns also, and he's got a Frontier finish mower sitting over at his place that's not being used. And I think that's gonna end up getting over here today or tomorrow. And you know what? It's supposed to rain tomorrow, and it's supposed to rain Monday, and then it's supposed to be dry Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I just got off the phone with John Deere. We've got a head gasket rebuild kit coming for this 720. Uh, it's not quite right. It needs a little work. The good 730, trying to find parts for the starter on it. And the best I can do is sit here and sell the hay that we already have cut from last year. We have second cutting bales stored in the semi-trailers and people are coming every single day. So I just make myself available here when it's dry to do anything I can here. When it's raining, I go work on the workhouse. I'm going to see what I can do to help him and get these guys fed. We'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Say goodbye, Georgie. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.
He's fascinated. He's found his fingers lately. So, bye bye. Remember to hit that like button. <laughs> boo! Don't don't hit the thumbs down. That's bad. It's boo that it's broke. We'll get it. We'll get it fixed. We'll get it running. We'll see you all next time. Bye bye. bye, -bye.